Both the primary and the secondary oscillator on the double helix can be frequency modulated, and both actually have inputs here on the modulation bus in the voltage control router section. The most common path is to use the secondary oscillator to modulate the primary oscillator. The normal wiring is to use the sine wave from the secondary oscillator. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my VCA again. There's the sine wave coming out of the primary. Again, it's not a perfect sine wave. It has a few harmonics, and I'm okay with that for many applications. I want a pure sine if I'm doing ring modulation, but it can add some character for FM. The green trace is the primary. The blue trace is the secondary oscillator, which is currently an octave below. I can choose to have the FM control voltage for my primary to come from the A bus or the B bus, as well as this direct input. This direct input does not have any attenuators. The A and B inputs have a normal input, an input jack to override it, a VCA, and a volume control. And there's also FM depth controls on each oscillator. So you do kind of need to watch what you're doing to make sure you're getting the FM amount you desire. I'll select using the A bus. I'll turn up my FM amount on the oscillator nothing happening yet because I need to turn up the amount for the normal connection. And here we go. The double helix uses exponential modulation. That's why our tuning changes at different FM depths. also allows us to go quite deep in our modulation. You can leave the oscillators detuned by selecting a different amounts of depth here. You can change that detune by playing around with the fine tune here in the oscillators. Although it is a different thing than the FM depth. The oscillators do have a tendency to entrain with each other and lock in. That can actually help if you don't want this beating offset sound. One issue I've encountered with FM on the double helix is that I do have trouble with tracking on the primary oscillator when I use steady state FM. That's in tune. You can hear the high notes out of tune. I can play with the depth. Then lower notes have quite a bit of beating to them. One approach is to tune at the middle pitch in your intended range and hope that the top and bottom of the range are still somewhat in tune. I can also try using fine tune to get the exact depth that I want, but I still have a bit of drift to my tracking. So what I found that I need to do is whenever I'm using a steady state, not enveloped, FM depth with a double helix, I use another channel of my AGH V scale. This allows me to carefully trim out the tracking of my oscillators anyway, so I've reserved a separate input that I use with slightly different tracking to help keep these two oscillators in tune across the keyboard. Take my FM depth out, make sure my oscillators are in tune so they don't beat, they don't travel. Middle C is zero volts, so that's a good tuning reference. There we go. Virtually no drift there. Get the FM depth that I want. necessary adjust my tracking to make that work. Much better tracking, very little beating. I found that these skills are wonderful things to have whenever you have analog oscillators in general, and they've become in particularly handy to help with FM, because exponential FM tracking is really tricky no matter what oscillator that you're using. In addition to changing the FM amounts, To really noisy stuff. I 
can also play around with the tuning of the second oscillator to create different intervals between them. Nice throaty format type sound there. If we look at the harmonic spectra, we have quite a bit happening here with a couple different format peaks, in addition to some noise there in between the main harmonics. Now, as I mentioned, this is not a clinically clean oscillator, but in some applications, I'm perfectly fine with that. Let's try some different high tunings for the second VCO. Now the sine wave is the default, but you can override this by plugging something into the external input. I'm going to use my stackable so I can send the same signal to the blue trace on my data, as well as the second input. Let's go ahead and pick something such as, say, the square wave. With exponential FM, different waveforms need different tuning. Again, I might need to play with the tracking, make that playable for a wider range. And then we can use the sawtooth for a different modulation and a different sound. And again, I have to play with the depth, because exponential FM is that way. Fine tuning to lock them in here. That's just a slight bending of the sine wave. Let's go for more depth and a more drastic effect here. Matter of fact, I'm going to resync my data to the secondary oscillator. It's not being FM'd, give me a more stable display. And now you can really see how the frequency of the primary oscillator is being changed by the wave shape of that secondary oscillator. fat sound, which again you can layer with your semi-modular or your other oscillators. Now exponential FM is good not only for these complex waveforms, but also to create very noisy percussive sounds. So I'm going to go ahead and use this second envelope generator down here to envelope the modulation depth. It's gone to my sustain amount. I'll turn that down to zero. Now I hit a key, it's going through this decay stage to change how deep the modulation is. drone and create very noisy percussive sounds if I want. Now in addition to that noisy percussive sound, I'm going to go ahead and remove the B modulation. I can shorten this down to create some nice attacks at the start to notes. And of course, that's for any waveform. It doesn't have to be the sine wave out. It could be, say, the sawtooth out. So I get a nice little pluck sound at the start of notes, which again, I can layer with normal oscillator. You get a nice percussive attack without needing to use a filter to simulate the burst of higher harmonics.
And of course, you can go way beyond this. The secondary oscillator can also be FM'd. You can set it up to the A bus, which by default means it would modulate itself, or you can set it up to the B bus and patch the primary oscillator into that input and have the two oscillators cross modulating each other. By contrast, Linear FM, which the double helix does not support, does not give you these crazy tuning offsets as you change the index of amount. So it's easier for tonal tracking or for enveloping the sound, but linear FM is not quite as strong at noisy percussive sounds as exponential FM is because you have a lot more depth, pitch shifts going on during the sound, etc. A surprising number of complex oscillators default to exponential FM, and the double helix is one of those. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,